I would describe my home in three words. Well, that's hard. Um, beach house, happy house, family house. Hi, I'm Serena Crawford, and um, I have been designing houses um, for the last, I think, 40 years. I love Clittenberg Bay. It's the beach I've been coming to. It's my Hampton, and this is where I've been coming ever since I was born. It was very, very remote in my parents' day, and now it's the place in South Africa. I just wanted something, because I worked out in my life that as you get older, the only thing that's completely precious that you can't have more of is time. And I kind of looked at the way I was leading my life, and so I wanted something very, very manageable and small. It ended up a little bit bigger than I thought sort of ended up with seven bedrooms. I don't quite know how that happened. But it is essentially a cottage with a very big veranda and a whole lot of tiny bedrooms. But it is the Cape aesthetic. It's the Cape cottage, gable aesthetic, very much a look in this area in the Cape. I love traditional um, houses that are part of the whole language of this area. But anyway, the house is very uh, dominated by a theory of building and design that has made a huge impact on my life. It's a book called Pattern Language by Christopher Alexander. And it's the most important architectural book. And it's all about, you know, the human hand being in a house. This is the main bedroom. This is my bedroom and my husband's bedroom. And it's by far the smallest bedroom I've ever had in my life. And let me tell you, I'm completely and utterly happy in it. It has a marvelous, very high double volume ceiling. It is a very uh, kind of rough African finish in this house. The, the, you know, the walls are all hand plastered and the cupboards are painted reeds and they mask, the front cupboards mask a walk-in cupboard behind that. So we got it, you know, a lot in before in previous houses, I would have just had everything in a walk-in cupboard. But because we're dealing with very small space, we had to be smart. This is our outdoor veranda. And this is a very critical thing in my life. I've been a person who's always loved to live in an outdoor space as if it's an internally decorated room. So this room was definitely designed to go with the poplar um, beams. And then above that is, is, is like a see-through roof so light does filter through I, this room does actually have blinds externally that come down there are lots of curves these are very much cape dutch curves in the walls at the bottom so i'm very aware of the human hand in absolutely everything there's hardly a thing in this room that isn't made by hand so what happens is a very very small house behind but this enormous veranda just gives it so much um, scope so this is one of the guest bathrooms and that's also a bit of a cape touch convention the sort of the scroll and then you're walking into the shower and then outside the shower if you open those doors are is a bath that has moroccan tiles which you can see very faintly so i always have an outdoor bathroom and on this occasion I decided to put the bath outside and so people mostly they can decide what they want to have and it's really lovely to lie in the bath and look at the sky. So this is a little guest bedroom. It has all Indian quilts on it. It's an original brass bed which, is, which was actually gilded in Victorian times. I adore starlights. I always have them. I've used them in every single house I've had for for nearly 40 years. And it's just the emotional resonance of when you're in a room, it's it's subliminal, you feel comfortable. And if you read a Christopher Alexander's book, just the human hand, just the fact that the human hand interacted with the surfaces, sends off something that says, this is not a computer generated house. This is um, our library looking down into my little drawing room. It's off the big veranda. And this was very important because we just didn't have enough space. So we built this um, gallery and we put in our bookcases. 
But if you look down, you can see the blue room, which I'll describe. Okay, so this is our cozy little drawing room. So what's the most important thing in this room is this wonderful Corfuian fireplace. So I have had a dream of this fireplace for over 35 years. And I kept this picture as an inspiration and it is influenced very much, but it's an African version of a Corfuian fireplace. And it's inspired by Jacob Rothschild's beach house in Corfu. And so we light this fire a lot, even in some of the doors are open. I can't tell you how magical it is at night. But this is a mosaic in my kitchen as a splashback. And it's the second one I've done with my broken blue and white porcelain. So I collect a lot of blue and white porcelain um, there's a lot of Nanking, broken Nanking cargo that has been put into this. And you can even see the Christie sticker that was a very famous um, shipwreck and was with the, it was the biggest sale Christie's has ever done. So some of them are 17th, 18th century pieces. I also have a piece from the beach from the earliest shipwreck in South Africa. So this is the kitchen and you can get a perspective of that um, mosaic. And there you can see in the weeded ceiling, you can see the central pole that's been wrapped up in twine. That's a very typical thing that gets done in Africa. Very, very early reference. So this is the, uh, the little drawing room. And that's a, a, a portrait that was done of me by um, a very famous South African artist called Beezy Bailey. And that's me dancing. And the fabrics are very important in this room. On that little chair, that little... Um, stocking chair are two ikat fabrics hand woven in barley and bought about 35 years ago i don't think you can buy those anymore and they very much decorated my old house um we've moved countries many times we've lived in i don't know how many continents and changed houses and so i always bring a thread of any house the previous house into the new house, even design elements. You know, so when my children walk into any house that's new of ours, they instantly feel at home. I feel this is very important, even though they're now both grown up. Those round baskets on the fireplace are very important to me. I, I always put them on my external verandas and one of them says, the central one says, happy family. So basically that's my, my mantra and my you know, those words that you say to yourself, because that's been my intention. And I think the whole thing about decorating and houses is a place for a happy family.